everyone, Waterfaller41 here, and this is part three of my Hyundai Palisade stereo upgrade video series. So first and foremost, I wanna apologize with how long it took me to get this video released. Uh, a couple things popped up, our basement flooded, and then my dog ended up getting really sick and ultimately diagnosed with cancer. So I had higher priorities than getting this video out, so I apologize, but here we go. We're gonna dive into the subwoofer installation on the Hyundai Palisade. This is gonna be a lot of talking, so I apologize. I have some pictures, I have boxes, part numbers, diagrams, and everything, but a lot of talking here, and hopefully by the end of this video, it's pretty clear as to how you would go about installing a subwoofer on your Hyundai Palisade. So in this video, I installed a powered subwoofer. So it's an all-in-one where the amp and subwoofer are at all one package underneath the front driver's seat. So in part one, we upgraded the front speakers on the Palisade, awesome upgrade. Part two, we upgraded the rear speakers in the Palisade. And part three, we are gonna install a subwoofer. So before I dive into exactly what I installed, my plan from the get-go was to either install a subwoofer underneath the front seats or to install it in that back plastic compartment. Um, a lot of these powered subwoofers run pretty big, so that black plastic compartment was nice from a real estate standpoint. There was a lot of room in there. However, running wires from the front of the truck or front of the car to the back is a complete pain in the butt. So I will say I accidentally landed on a subwoofer that fits very well in this car. So here is the installed subwoofer. This is a Rockford Fosgate PS8 and it sits underneath the front driver's seat and it accidentally fits perfect. So we'll talk about dimensions here. So if you were to go with this subwoofer or any other one, um, I'll give you the dimensions so you can figure out which one fits your budget, your needs, and can fit into the space that's available for us. So this, like I said, fits underneath the driver's seat, but it could also fit underneath the passenger seat. The reason I installed the subwoofer underneath the driver's seat because 75% of the time, the driver is the only one in the car and they're gonna to wanna to feel the base. And because powered subwoofers are not really as strong as your separate um, individually amped subwoofers, I wanted to make sure that the driver could feel the base and by putting it underneath the driver's butt, here we go. So Rockford PSA, it's an eight inch subwoofer. And we'll get into some more of the specs in a second here, but that is where it's installed. You can see you got car seats in the car. So I do have kids. So far, so good. It does poke out just a tad and that's with the seat where my wife sits right now. But from a coverage standpoint, I don't think we're gonna have any issues with them kicking it. They're very young, um, so we got some time before they really have some big feet and that becomes an issue. But these powered subwoofers and all of the plugs and wires are on the left side, so it's up tucked out of the way. I'll pull it out in a minute when we start talking through the wiring diagram, but that's how the subwoofer fits. If you wanna go with the smaller one, there's plenty of room to fit a smaller one up in there. But the smaller you go on these subwoofers, either the more expensive they're gonna be if you wanna keep the power output, or you're gonna end up giving up some of the power output because the smaller subwoofer means a smaller amp. So let's take a look at a couple of the high level things before we dive into wiring on a car. First and foremost, here's the box for the Rockford Fosgate. Like I said, it's a PS8, so it's an eight inch subwoofer. And let's flip this guy over and look at some of the specs. So the most important thing when you're looking at powered amplifiers is make sure it's a class D or better amplifier. The reason that being is because with these powered amplifiers or powered subwoofers, we're typically trying to cram them into a small location underneath the seat, underneath the dash somewhere. And because of that, thermal heat gain is an issue. So because of where it's at, it might be getting hit with the HVAC duct. It might just be underneath and can't really have that clean of airflow. Obviously you want the best airflow, but by getting a class D, that is some of the most efficient amplifiers out on the market today and efficient from a thermal management standpoint, meaning they don't run as hot, which means they don't need as crazy of cooling as those old school amps with the aluminum fins on them. So keep that in mind. And that's the reason why some of these amps are really cheap compared to the class D ones, because they don't have that efficiency built into it and you'll end up running into overheating issues. So let's go back to the subwoofer. Let's talk about the size. So front to back, is 9.4 inches. So really 9.4 inches, nine and, a, nine and a half inches is about the max you could go on these things before they start uh, pushing out past the seat. So keep that in mind. Nine and a half inches is basically your maximum depth that these things can be with 14 inches. So this amp is 14 inches from end to end and you could see that 14 inches fits absolutely perfectly. If you go any bigger, 
you're going to start getting up onto the sides of that carpet. It's not going to sit as flat. This thing is sitting perfectly flat on the floor of the Palisade. The other thing that this allows us to do is at the 14 inch mark, it's easy to pick that amp up and twist it and pull it out and not mess with the wires because the wires are all coming off this side. You want to basically pick it up and turn it out so you're not torquing the wires or anything like that in case you need to check it or in case you need to adjust the amplifier uh, settings or anything like that. As far as the specifications on the amp, this bad boy is 150 watts RMS, 300 watts peak. Um, it's got a bunch of crossovers for high and low. So the benefit of this amp, really one of the big selling points for me on this one was its turnkey. So it comes with everything from your power wire, your negative wire, your turn on leads if you need it. And then the best part is this amp uses both speaker level inputs and RCA level inputs. So if you have a line output converter, you could run your speaker levels into the line output converter and then run the RCA cables directly into the plug that goes into this amp. Or in my case, if you want to just use pure speaker level input, so you just want to tap into the speakers full signal from there, you could clip the wires and then you just tie into there. So you have a positive negative for the, both the left and right side of the car. Um, the depth of this guy, so it's about 3.3 .3 inches. Again, depth is not too big of an issue as long as when you are lifting and lowering your seat, you are clear of everything. And you can see there's no metal bars or anything like that. It does have a harness that ends up pushing on top of the subwoofer if you lower the seat a lot, but that's not too big of a concern. Really what I'd be concerned about is any sort of metal piece that's gonna push down on the, on the subwoofer. So, Rockford Fosgate, PS8, I picked this up from Crutchfield. Keep an eye on Scratch and Dent if you're a baller on a budget. A lot of times you can find stuff for a couple bucks off in their Scratch and Dent program. Otherwise, I think this is roughly 350 bucks. But again, the most important thing with this one is the size. The size of this amp, or subwoofer and amp, fit absolutely perfect in the Palisade. And then the other benefit of this is everything's on one side of the amp. So all the adjustments, all the inputs, the power, the ground, the amp and everything are all on one side. So as long as you put it on the side that you can get access to, I'll show you here and we'll, I'll get a flashlight on this sooner. You can see, well, I have the wires here, I am loomed up, but all of the wires are coming in the amp from that side. So this is the subwoofer I went to. Like I said, I will leave a link in the description below directly to this guy if you want to use this one. Otherwise, you know, any of the other stuff at Crutchfield will work perfectly fine as well. Last couple things, like I said earlier, completely turnkey. So you get your power cable, you get a fuse, you get your negative cable, you get a remote base knob, super nice. You get the ability to use RCA inputs or speaker level inputs via the plug that they give you. If you want to use speaker level inputs, all you gotta do is clip the plug cut the RCA ends off, strip them, and then tap them into wires. And then you get a whole host of options to run this amp. Um, super efficient, like I said, class D. And for the money, this is probably the most powerful amp subwoofer combo you could buy at Crutchfield. All right, so this is the subwoofer we use. Super durable, kind of a boring looking subwoofer, but again, it's up underneath the seat. I really don't care about looks. So far, I've been super happy with it. So let's start talking about wiring and then I'll show you a quick high level summary of what I found out while I was doing this. And then I'll show you where the wires are at on the car. That way you know where to start targeting and everything. So let's get everything set up for that and we'll start talking through the wiring. All right, if you've ever purchased any sort of stereo equipment from Crutchfield in the last couple of years, you know you get everything you need to install that equipment on the car. So when I purchased the speakers for the front and rear, you get the instructions and everything, you're good to go on that. They give you a digital copy, so you just print it out or you can pull it up on an iPad or phone and look at it from there. But a couple things on here. So this is the wiring diagram for the speakers and then the color wires for each of the speakers. I have a couple really important ones called out here. So left front door speaker and right front door speaker. These are the speakers down in the front door. And I just wanna point these out just in case you're looking for the colors here. So brown is the positive on the left front, so on the driver's side. Brown is the positive and white is the negative. On the right front, so on the passenger front door speaker, you're looking at red is the positive and blue is the negative. Now, when I installed this subwoofer, I know a lot of people are really hell bent on pulling the signal from the front speakers because they say those are that's a guaranteed full signal because a lot of times what happens with factory systems is they'll filter out and they'll really only send a partial signal to the rear speakers because 90% of the time you really only care about what's coming out of here because you got a tweeter, you got a door woofer, sometimes you got a center speaker. But 
Um, in this case, I pulled the signal from the rear speakers and I have not noticed any sort of difference. You have enough adjustability on this to really make the fill and everything work out perfectly fine. But if you do dive in there, these are the wire colors you're looking for. So on the left side and driver's side, brown and white, and on the passenger side, red and blue. And with the speaker wires, what I found on these cars, the speaker wires are twisted together. So if you find a twisted pair that is this color combo, then you're good to go. Okay, so like I said, in my installation, I tapped into the rear speakers and I use speaker level inputs. So basically what you're doing is you're gonna have your wires coming off your head unit, they go to your speaker, and then to install your subwoofer, you're just gonna tap into those. So you're still gonna leave that positive and negative wire connected to your left rear speaker because you still need the sound there, but you're gonna intercept that signal and send some of it to your subwoofer. This will not impact the speaker, and this will give you the inputs that you need for your subwoofer to give it the signal that it needs to, again, act as a subwoofer. You still need to run your power and ground and, and some sort of ignition source, but this is how, in general, the installation is gonna look from a high level standpoint. So left rear, uh, yellow and black. So yellow is your positive, black is your negative. Again, these are twisted pairs. So when you pull open the wire bundle, and I'll show you how I access them, but I looked right in the B pillar here, they are twisted pair. They are the only pair of wires in that bundle that are twisted. On the passenger side, you got a green as your positive and orange as your negative. So like I said, on the subwoofer, you have speaker level inputs and each one of these terminals is a right and left, positive and negative. All you need to do is line those terminals up with the left and right positive and negative wires. So here's our head unit. Here's our front speakers. We left those untouched. Like I said, you have a positive and a negative going to each one. So we have the head unit wires going there and then the head unit then kicking out signal to our left and right rear speakers. And then when we installed our subwoofer, so this is the subwoofer here, we just T-tapped into those wires and then sent the signal to the subwoofer. You are not impacting the signal that's going to those left rear speakers. All you're doing is just grabbing some of it so that the subwoofer can filter it out. And then using the external power from the power wire that you're gonna run from the battery, it's gonna you know, give you that base that you want in your sound system. So as far as making these connections, obviously the best way to do that is to clip the wires, solder in the extra wire leads, and then um, those can be connected into the subwoofer amplifier. The second best option is the option that I typically go for. So I just recently started using these guys so these are solder seal wire connectors, and I'll leave a link to these in the description. But basically what we're looking at here is a butt connector that you don't crimp. So essentially what you do is you put your wires together. So a wire will enter, a strip wire goes in on each side, and then you start heating it up. And this, this is solder in the middle, and that solder will melt on the connection joint. And then these blue rings will also melt because they're heat shrink and the whole thing is heat shrink. So it gives you a really nice firm connection without worrying about over crimping something. Cause I've been doing stereo stuff for a long time and I've over crimped things a lot. And sometimes on a lot of these skinny factory wires, so these are probably 18, 20 gauge wires. If you over crimp them, you're gonna end up splitting that wire. So I have one, two, three, four, four of those connections made. So again, you basically have the signal wire coming in and then two wires going out. The original wire is gonna go back to the speaker and then the new wire is gonna cut down into the subwoofer. So, as a summary, again, I repeat a lot of things, I apologize, but again, a lot of talking here, really my whole point of this video is just so you know what you need to do to install any sort of subwoofer in your car. Install it underneath the passenger or driver's seat, get a nice, decent powered subwoofer, and then here's your speaker wire colors that you're gonna tap into. All right, so let's go hop in the car, get our lighting adjusted, and I'll show you where those wires are at and how you have to access them. All right, I want to take a step back here because I want to show you what I'm talking about. When I say A, B, and C pillar, A pillar is the front one, B pillar is this one in the middle, and then C pillar is this guy back here, and I would suppose you can call the tailgate a D pillar, but C, B, A. So we are looking for the wire bundle that is in the B pillar column. So you can see inside the door jam, there is this little accordion looking thing, and this is the wire connection from the car into the door. So you're gonna get the power for your windows, you're gonna get the power for your locks, and then you're also gonna get everything signal-wise for your speaker. All of that is included in here. But that is way too tight to be jumping into and tapping into anything there, and we obviously don't wanna tap into anything in the door. 
So what we need to do is get to the other side of this plug. So we need to get inside the B pillar. This B pillar is really easy to remove. First thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna pull up this weather seal on both the front and the rear door. So the weather seal is really simple. You just basically pull it like that and it pops off. So when you pull this guy off, it gives you access to get your fingers around the edge of this trim here because ultimately you're gonna need to pull that off. So once you get this weather trim off, you're gonna wanna pull up this, this trim panel just a little bit so you free up the joint down here. You don't need to completely remove this. You just wanna pull it up a little bit. Then we're gonna go to the front door. And on the front door, we're gonna wanna remove the sill panel here. So this sill panel removes all the way up there. And you're gonna wanna leave that off because when we run our power and everything, we're gonna wanna use that channel as well. And then what that'll allow you to do, again, same thing, you're gonna wanna remove this weather trim first, then remove this trim panel. Then you're gonna wanna go up to the top here and start using a plastic trim tool to pull on the edge to then pop this guy out. You don't need to completely remove this because you won't be able to because the seatbelt's tacked in at the bottom there, but remove it enough so you can get access to the wires. And the wire bundle that you're looking for, again, ties in with this little accordion guy. So your wire trim or your wire, the other side of that connector is right here. So once you remove all these panels, you're gonna get access to the other guy that, and then you're simply just gonna to wanna to undo that clip. So you undo that clip by pulling up on there, and then the whole thing just pops right off like that. And what that allows you to do then is when you are able to get to the other end of this plug, you could then pop this guy out so you can get access to it. I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna remove this trim just now, but by basically pulling that tab up and then pulling the connector off, You've then disconnected the door electrically from the car, and then you'll be able to pull this plug that way and get access to the speaker wires on there. And again, when you open up that wire harness or that wire loom, that wire bundle, the only wires in there that are twisted are your speaker wires. So I just shared the colors of everything and I'll have all of these documents available in the description. But once you get into behind this panel, it's the same thing on both sides. The twisted pair is your speaker wires. Clip those, tie in your new wire, run your wire down, and then run it over to your amp, and then you're good to go. So let me go ahead and get this guy reconnected, and we can start talking through the wire routes I took inside the car, and then we'll finally talk about the power and ground, and then that should bundle up everything for the installation of the subwoofer. Okay, so after the wire is reconnected here, and you got your your splice made into the factory wire, you wanna then run that signal over to where your amp is gonna need it. And in my case, the amp is on, or the plugs are on the outboard side, so I gotta move the lighting over here. So that wire, this is the front side of the B pillar, and our wire harness is right here. So I tied into the wire, probably about right here. I ran those wires straight down, and then I left this open, and what I did is I ran those wires underneath the carpet. There's plenty of room to fish those guys underneath the carpet, so then you could route them underneath the seat and get them situated, ready to go to tie into your subwoofer amp. Again, you're gonna wanna keep this off for a while because not only are you gonna run the speaker wire for your driver's side through here, you're gonna wanna run the power through here as well. Um, and if you are gonna run an external turn on lead, the fuse box is right here and that's where you'd run it. And I have a add a fuse ready to go because I'm gonna add an external turn on lead in there as well soon, but that's where the fuse box is at. So leave this trim open. Your driver's side speaker wire is gonna run down this guy. It's gonna go underneath the carpet and make its way to your amp. So let's talk about the passenger side because that's a little bit trickier. Um, and I had to do something a little bit hokey I wasn't a huge fan of, but again, I didn't want to drill any holes and it's working out so far. So let's talk about that one real quick. Okay, so we are on the passenger side. And like I said, the passenger side took a little bit of a trickier wiring route because we weren't right next to the subwoofer. So we basically had to get our connection from the B pillar down on the ground around the center console and over to the subwoofer. A little bit of a tricky route and I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's working out. So I'm all right with it for now, but made the connection here. I ran the wire down, I fished the wire underneath the carpet so I can get it underneath the seat there. And then, let me see if I can move my light here. Then if you see, there's a little wire loom in there. That is a speaker signal. So there wasn't a very clean route to get this over there without having to pop up underneath the bottom of the center console. So rather than just have bare wires hanging out there, I wire loomed it so it looks somewhat factory 
you don't see it I'm the only one who sees it because I know it's there but if you're not looking for it you're not gonna see it anyway ran the wire down the B pillar underneath the seat used underneath the carpet as much as possible I got it to the side of the seat I popped the wire up underneath the center console and then I ran that wire it comes this way all the way around goes out the side of the center console on the other side looks exactly like that so another little piece of wire loom and then that's how I get that the passenger side speaker signal over to the subwoofer so rather than drill anything and remove the center console I literally just tuck that wire up underneath here it's perfectly fine not rattling that way I have both signals now over by the subwoofer underneath the driver's seat so let's talk about the power and ground and button up this subwoofer installation video all right real quick before we start talking through the route i took for running the power and ground here is what the amplifier looks like when it's pulled out from underneath the seat like i said all the wires come in on one side but also all of the adjustments are on one side so it's really nice because if you situate this guy underneath the seat the right way you're gonna have access to all that stuff really easily by just simply removing it i've seen some where they have the adjustments on one side wires on the other side wires on both sides this has everything right here, super easy. I don't even know if they purposely designed it that way, but it is nice. So a couple things on here as far as what's all plugged in here. We have our power, we have our ground, we have our four speaker signals. Remember, we have a positive and negative for the left and the right side of the vehicle. Then we have our base knob. So this is a headphone wire that I just added. They give you a headphone cord that plugs into the back of the base knob. It's super long, I didn't need to make it make the run that long the base knob is up underneath the sheet and I'll show you where I installed that but this works perfectly fine then you have your subwoofer EQ you have your frequency for the cutoff you have the punch EQ which is a feature on the Rockford Fosgate amp kind of like a loudness then you have a couple things to tell the speaker do you want the amp to turn on when it gets a speaker signal or do you want it to turn on based on a remote um, and then you need to also tell it whether you're using a high pass or a low pass speaker input so um, in this case, I'm using the speaker level input, so we have it on that option. That way it knows how to treat the sound when it comes in the subwoofer. So, super turnkey to install this guy, but let's talk through the last little bit here, and that's the power wire and ground wire, because everyone's always curious about how you get that power wire through the grommet or through the firewall, and it's super simple, and I'll show you where you do that at. But let's get this guy back underneath the seat, um, and then we'll pop the hood and I'll show you the power wire run. All right, we are underneath the hood of the Hyundai and I wanted to show you how I ran the battery power and then I'll hop inside underneath the dash and show you where the power wire comes through because it's really hard to show you on here, um, but I'll show you on the inside of the car and you just kind of locate it based on where that rubber grommet's at. But ultimately, what you do is you find a battery and you're gonna run your power wire from the battery in the shortest possible run you can make into the cab and you basically wanna land that power cable on the same side of the vehicle that the subwoofer is going to be on. Since our subwoofer is on the pass or on the driver's side, we wanted to make sure that that wire went in and then landed into the subwoofer amp combo unit, whatever you want to call it, on the driver's side. So, power terminal for the battery. Pop that guy open. You see our positive terminal for the subwoofer. Like I said, all of these crimps, with the exception of the heat shrink here, were included in the kit. That wire runs down through here. You see our fuse right here. Just got to zip tie that guy up. That wire then runs up here. I loom it, run it around the fuse box, and then it drops down and it pops right through the firewall through a rubber grommet on the firewall over there. It's a hard thing to see. Definitely have a partner or a buddy help you because fishing that wire through there is kind of a pain in the butt because of how deep down in there. It's gonna take a lot of dish soap to make it slippery enough to slide it through there. But once you get it through the hole, it's perfectly fine. Um, but I had my son help me. So basically what he did is he fed the wires this way and I ran the wire from the engine bay into the cab. That way I could pull all I needed to do in there and then I could trim the wire on this side, fix the fuse and we're good to go. So battery, route around the fuse box, drops down into the firewall. There's that rubber grommet on the firewall. I used a, um, a kebab stick to poke a hole there and it's basically it's it's a kebab stick but I cut the end off so I taped the wire to the kebab stick I poked it in there and then I pulled it through into the cab and then my son just basically fed the wire in and then I slowly pulled it through don't pull too fast you don't want to pull that rubber grommet off the firewall but if you pull it slow enough and if you put dish soap on it to give it some lubrication it'll slide through there pretty easily all right 
So let's hop underneath the dash and I'll show you where that power wire came through and then I'll show you where I started my ground and then we'll finish up our wiring run. All right, we're gonna dive underneath the dash here. We got our light set up. So there is the rubber grommet. It is the main wiring harness uh, hub, I guess. And it's really the main entry point from the firewall between the engine bay and the cab. So like I said, I used my kebab stick that was trimmed I poked a hole at the bottom of it so I wouldn't nick any of the factory wires and I fed that wire from the engine bay into the cab and then I slowly pulled it and you can see it's zip tied up to some of the cable. It looks like you might be able to see it but honestly you don't see any of it. That's really down deep underneath the dash there. So ran that power wire in here. It cuts down on this little kick panel here and then cuts underneath the carpet right into our subwoofer. As far as the ground there are a bunch of bolts available inside the kick panel here that we use for our ground. So when the power came in here, I also grabbed a ground in there and then I ran both of those wires on this way and in there. Generally speaking, one of the things that the pros always tell you to do is keep the power and the ground away from each other and then keep the power away from your speaker level inputs. So if you do happen to have, if you do need to have them cross at any point, Crossing them perpendicular is the best way to do it. Running them side by side is not really advised because what happens is you can get uh, interference, especially when you're using speaker level inputs, you can get interference in the subwoofer, which can get a whine. You know you can get that if when you rev the engine, you hear the whine go up and down with the revs. Anyway, try to keep those wires as far away from each other for as long as possible until you get them close to the amp. And at some point you do need to run them next to each other. Okay, now let's say you have a older powered amplifier subwoofer combo and it doesn't have any sort of signal sensing. Signal sensing is basically when the stereo turns on, there's a signal that's sensed from the factory head unit and that will turn on the amp. That's all it needs to turn on the amplifier. However, some of the old school ones and a lot of people like the more organic of just turning it on with a switch lead. Here is how and where you can find that. So like I said, there's a fuse panel just to the left of the steering wheel and you're gonna tap into uh, fuse position number seven with an add a fuse. It's a 10 amp fuse in there. And if you look up in there, I have an add a fuse in there right now ready to go because what I wanna ultimately do is just run a regular cable down in here. I'm a little bit old school. I would like to have that um, turn on lead based on an ignition source. I don't like signal sensing too much um, because sometimes when you're opening and closing a lot of these more modern doors, it has a the, the cars and how smart they are. Sometimes the tone goes through the speakers which will turn on the amplifier temporarily. So by running a switch turn on lead to the subwoofer, you're making sure that that thing is only turning on when the car's on, which is the only time you really need the subwoofer. It doesn't impact the speakers because you haven't tapped in there. Doesn't That won't impact that. This will just only turn on that subwoofer only when the car's on, provided you find a fuse position that is on when the car's on. Hopefully that made sense. If it doesn't, by all means, leave questions down in the comments below. These stereo videos are complicated, and I know a lot of times, for a lot of folks, this is the first time diving into it. By all means, I'm an open book. Please ask questions. If something doesn't make sense in this video, let me know, and I'll try to explain it to you. I'm gonna leave a link to a Google Share, dot, uh, Google Share folder with the Crutchfield installation manual, as well as my chintzy little wiring diagram. And I'll leave a link to these guys in there, and a link to the subwoofer and everything, as well as the speakers that I use, just in case you're curious about that one. But anyway, that is how you install a powered subwoofer in the 2020 Hyundai Palisade that does not have the factory amplified system. I should have mentioned that way in the beginning, but this has the base stereo system. Real quick, let's talk through the process here. First thing you wanna do is pick a subwoofer that fits underneath your seats. The Rockford Fosgate PSA is quite literally the best subwoofer with the most power that fits underneath the Palisade and I bet you the Telluride seats. You're then gonna find your rear speaker panel signal, which are in the B pillars. Tap into those, run your power down. Make sure they land wherever your subwoofer's at, in my case, the driver's side. Then you're gonna run your, run, run your power. So tap into the positive terminal on the battery, run that around the fuse box, hop in through the rubber grommet here, grab your ground here, run your wires up underneath the seat, make all your connections. By all means, leave yourself maybe a foot foot and a half of extra wire underneath there. That way you could pull that subwoofer out and do work on it. It does not make sense to land everything with the most perfect amount of length here because then you don't leave yourself the option to be able to take that amp out without stressing those wire connections. 
And you don't want to do that because over time you're going to end up wearing them out. So leave yourself about a foot and a half of wire for everything from your speaker levels to your power, your ground and your ignition lead. If you're going to use that, then from there, tune your system, turn down the bass on your speakers and let the subwoofer start picking up some of that bass. So that's where that crossover comes in handy. You want to tell that subwoofer, you want to tell that subwoofer when to start picking up the bass, and then you could adjust the bass inside your, um, your head unit. The other thing that you could do, um, if you know you're going to be adding a subwoofer is you could put bass blockers on your speakers. That way you're basically using a high pass filter. So you're only allowing the high frequencies to go to the speakers and everything else is handled by your subwoofer, but you do still want some of the bass coming from the speakers. But again, you could adjust some of that in there and then you could turn the bass up on your subwoofer, which reminds me, I forgot to show you where, uh, I put the bass knob. So we're underneath the seat. And there's the bass knob right there. It's just Velcroed up underneath there. You could reach it and you could turn it up and down based on the song. So when my wife is listening to her trashy songs like WAP and whatnot, she could turn it up. And when I'm listening to Whiskey Myers or something like that, I could turn it down to something a little bit more tasteful. But that's where the subwoofer knob is. And like I said earlier, they give you 15 feet maybe of a bass knob cord so you can run it wherever you want. I only needed two feet, so I just ditched the cord they gave me and just grabbed a regular headphone cord and used that. But with that said, that is how you install the Rockford PS8 powered subwoofer in the 2020 Hyundai Palisade, which concludes my three-part stereo series for the Hyundai Palisade. Um, appreciate it. Again, like I said, thank you very much for sticking with me and I apologize for how long it took to get this video out. I hope this information was helpful in getting you started with where and how to install that subwoofer in your car. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to drop them down in the comments below. I'm here to help. Um, my videos are not here to be an entertainment thing. They're here really just to give you guys all the knowledge that you need um, to do a lot of these projects. I know sometimes um, instructions aren't very clear and forums are kind of dying right now. So these videos hopefully will help you all get kicked off on your projects. Last thing is if there's any projects you're interested in seeing on the Palisade, I'm all ears. I'm kind of running out of ideas on this guy, but I keep wanting to tinker with it. Um, so let me know if there's anything you think we should be adding to this guy um, in the future here. But with that said, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.